Hey, everybody. What's going on? Rob Sesternino back here to talk about the traders here today on our feedback show here with Puyi Zavikili. Puyi, how are you? I'm doing great, Rob. Excited to be here. One more before the finale. Can't wait. With an honest to goodness traders alum here with us, uh, making uh, I believe her four thousandth appearance here on Rob as a podcast with us. Very excited for Rachel Riley. Yay! I'm so excited to be here, Rob. Can you do a bell for me for old times? Yes, one Thanks. extra one for you. <laughs> yes, Rachel, how have you been? Good. Just you know, busy. Um, I'm dying over this season. It's so good. I really like i'm a little jealous because i really wanted to be on this season it's just yes really fun why do you feel like that this season is better than season one i do and only okay so i thought three was masterful in season one like three as a trader taught us all how to be traders but i felt like i wish as the faithfuls we would have played a different game mm -hmm. and now that i've watched it this season i've watched other versions and I've learned, like, played the game myself. Now I, I think I know how the game needs to be played. But it's hard when you're the first season of anything because you don't out. know. Yeah, you have to figure it out on your own. And we didn't have anything to go off of. But this season, I do really, I really enjoy. Okay, good. Well, looking forward to getting into all of it here uh, with you. Uh, how's life outside the traders? It's so good. Uh, my babies are getting older. They're not babies anymore. She's seven and three. Mm -hmm. um, Brendan's doing amazing. He's uh, took a job at UAB. He is a professor. He's also working at the hospital. So he's busy. I'm busy. I'm doing, I was telling you earlier, I'm doing the PTA mom life stuff. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm settled into my mom life, doing all that fun stuff. Uh, but we really like Alabama. I think it's a really great place to live and, you know, raise a family. Yeah. Well, I miss getting to see you guys in real life. No. Uh, Hopefully you'll do like one of your little your little Rob tours around here. Oh, okay. I'm down All here. Right. <laughs> do the live show. That could be good. Yeah, do the live show in Birmingham. Birmingham. <laughs> okay. Is that a big a big hotbed for reality TV? It actually really is. Yeah, people love the reality TV here. Everyone recognizes us, and they love love reality TV. So I feel like if you did like uh Birmingham Rob does Birmingham or something okay you would, like probably get really Call of that yeah yeah <laughs> and you know we have some like local celebrities that had come out of yes America. who uh well Taylor Hicks from uh America. oh so oh, he comes up on the podcast all the time now someone right, we've heard more from than I expected Rob on the yes. on the traders feedback show and then also the uh oh my god who is it um Ruben Stuttered oh wow yeah so, so many have, idols. Yeah, some idols. And then um, who else? Like, there, you know, is that the, th you live in the 305? Uh, 205. Oh, 205. Yeah. Maybe Ruben's a 305. I could be wrong, but he's definitely <laughs> Alabama. a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, though, there is a lot of Alabama bachelor people. Uh, we we got a good range. Now I'm trying, I'm casting Bachelorette. It was two, you're right. It was, yeah. it was two. And I'm casting the Golden Bachelorette. So I'm trying to get anybody listening. I'm trying to get people for Golden Bachelorette. I got to, got to pimp that out. <laughs> yes, you got to. Okay. All right. Golden Bachelorette. Okay. Are you getting close to finding to, to, so you're, you're looking for, okay. So you're looking for the guys for the Golden Bachelorette. We're looking for the single men, single mm -hmm. eligible over 55. Uh, yes. I went to a pickleball tournament. Taylor Hicks? I mean, I was like, I do like him. And I, is he over? He's like 50 something, right? Yeah, that's what I was I trying think, to check. I think he was like uh, prematurely gray. I think he was like gray at like 23 years old. So well, he I don't was think like, so. he he's was 47. Gray. He's 47. Yeah. So he's a little bit young. He's a spring chicken. Yeah. He's, but he's gray because it's trendy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, that's trendy is good. All right. Let's talk about the traders. Okay. Woo! We are Rachel. It's finale week for the traders. I can't wait. I'm dying. I literally feel like these cliffhangers they've been giving us are really like something else. Like we didn't get clip. That was the other thing. We didn't get any cliffhangers because ours was released. You guys one did eight yeah. hours like episode cliffhangers, but then you just played the next one. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So we didn't really have a lot of the cliffhanger or the yeah. you know to time for people to like talk about it. Um, so I I'm really excited to see what happens this week, especially with Kate being the sure. only creator. Um, 
I mean, are we talking about it in like, are we, I don't want to spoil it. Are, am I allowed to spoil? I mean, well, don't tell us uh, that who wins the show. No, I don't know, know anything about yeah. that. I'm saying but spoil like from the last spoil, episode. Spoil, you know, you could talk through the oh, episodes that we've seen. Yes. Yeah. So we've seen, so we know Phaedra is gone, which is, she was yeah. my favorite. Yes. And now Kate's the only traitor. So I'm just dying to find out if she can do it on her own. Rachel, I, what's the status of you and Kate? Yeah. Are you guys on good terms now? Or it's going to irk you if Kate wins? I will be really excited if she wins, but I will also feel like she's always going to have a caveat on her win only because she came in a little bit late and she was the traitor with two episodes, two days left. Right. Mm -hmm. So I feel like she didn't have to work as hard as poverty or Phaedra, but look, I mean, she's there. She's, she hadn't, she didn't have a choice to be a traitor. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Like I, we haven't really seen her play cause she just like let Phaedra, she said, it's up to you for this last murder. And so I think once we see Kate playing, but you know what I would have loved to do would have been the one uh, dumping bugs on her head. I think that that was <laughs> this opportunity. <laughs> like she would have seen me freaked out because like, you know, Kate is just always freaked out about my outfits. So she would have freaked out about whatever I was wearing, saw me, and then I would have dumped bugs on her head. And that would have just mm -hmm. been such great television. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll get you on the Dr. Will spot for season three. Honestly, yeah. I mean, it would have been so fun because if, if Kate was in there, but maybe, maybe I do yeah. need that. Spot. I saw on Twitter, Rachel, that uh, you were annoyed with Dr. Will when right. he came out and said that uh, some people just come back to see if they still got it. And turns out maybe they never had it. And you seem yeah. you seemed annoyed. I felt like he was talking about Dan. Why, why did you take exception to what Will was saying? Because I also was one of the Big Brother people. He just like blanketly said Big Brother, yeah. right? But I don't think he was talking anything. about you. Right. And I don't think he might not have been talking about me, but I will say that, like, I thought I did a good job. And this is my problem with Will even saying that and coming for us. He has never tried. He has not tried another show ever. He won one reality show 20 years ago. So if he wants to talk, he needs to back it up. Yeah. It's 2024, baby. We don't just blurt things out. We back them up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So oh yeah, I, mean, I feel like Dr. Will should, if he wants to, you know, be that guy, then he needs to go try. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe you could find a show for him. Oh, I, I honestly have tried, but you know, nobody wants yeah. to be the Golden Bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, well, this is also good, that good to hear that you and Kate are good because I yeah. thought that uh, maybe that based on like uh, where we saw like last on the Traders reunion from last season that maybe there was still some bad blood. No, I mean, I don't think there's like bad blood. Like Kate's really nice in, in real life. She's lovely. Um, she's a, a new mom. Um, oh. you know, I've talked to her about being a new mom. Congratulated her on that. I didn't that. know that. Yeah. So I think like. I don't think that there's any bad blood, but it's just kind of the fact that I think it would be funny to, of course, you know, go dump bugs on her head after the first season. And I would sure. wear a very uh, community theater outfit just for her. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, now you're so tapped in to the Traders universe. I, I know that they filmed the reunion show yeah. already. That are, are you hearing any buzz about uh, that this reunion show is going to be particularly exciting? I heard a lot of buzz and I heard it is going to be very exciting. I heard there was a lot of hurt feelings, a lot of like heated elements we to like the that. reunion. And so I remember when we filmed ours, we, I felt like we had highs and lows, but like this one sounds like it was just high, 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 high. So I think it's going to be really juicy. The outfits alone are a reason to tune in. Mm -hmm. Like the girls look fabulous. Even the guys are bringing it for the reunion. We've been seeing like bananas shared. I don't even like bananas, but he shared a pic and he looks good. Why don't you like <laughs> him? What did he do? Oh, you know, these reality beefs that I have with people. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but I'm trying to rack my brain. Have you ever done a show with him? No, I haven't. No, I've never done. But he dated my friend Morgan. And uh, yes, 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 yes. I recall. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. All but right. I mean, he looked, he did bring it for the reunion show. Um, CT looked great. 
uh, all the guys, like, I mean, Peter was wearing like a little velvet red number. Yeah. Like, they, I mean, it was really fun to see their outfit. So just tune in for that. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. The Puya, the the sounds like uh, I wasn't gonna watch it, but now Rachel talked me into it. <laughs> you weren't gonna watch it, Rob. I feel like the mounting tension from week one with bananas, like bananas. Still, I just went to look at his Instagram. All his photos from the reunion have hashtag justice for bananas. So he's still harping on that. Um, mm -hmm. You have the beef with um, what where I'm expecting some Phaedra and Dan discourse. I'm excited to see that. Pilot Pete in the middle of all of those things. I'm excited to see that. News coming out that Pilot Pete and Ekans, Lord not Ekans Sue might be a thing. There might be a relationship there. Oh. Rob, get your popcorn ready. And we can also watch Ek and Sue, I think, tonight on Celebrity Big yeah. Brother. Yeah. Did you yeah. give Ek and Sue any advice before she was going into the Big Brother house? No, I wish I would have. But I bet Janelle did. I bet mm -hmm. Janelle did because Janelle seems like she probably was the last person Ek and Sue talked to. So I'm sure she did. Okay. And then also with the Larsa and Marcus fallout. Yeah. I did mm -hmm. ask one person i don't know if i can spoil it but i did ask if they sat next to each other so we'll all have to be yes, watching i saw the that. seating chart was leaked so i think yes. that, that kind of okay stuff so i there. i was dying over that because they broke up are they are are they or aren't they kind of thing um yeah and then also like i just think like will peppermint and trishel are they gonna have a head-to-head -head? like i'm kind of excited to see that and also like I don't know, uh, MJ and Sheree, are they, what are they going to say to Phaedra? Because we haven't really, we didn't really get their, mm -hmm. um, you know, their opinion on when they learned that she was a traitor because they haven't really covered that yet. Yeah. Well, okay. The, you're friendly with Sari and yeah. she was a traitor. I mean, did you feel betrayed that, I mean, she, Phaedra didn't volunteer for this. She right. got recruited by no. Alan. <laughs> She was picked from the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I, I use the word recruited and, and that's a different as a different terminology, okay. but she got tapped on the shoulder. Yeah, she got tapped on the shoulder. So I, I don't think I have the same mentality as Sheree and MJ. So we, Sari and I come from the gamer background. We come yes. from this, like, it's a game. We're going to win the money. We're here to play. We're not here to like, just make television and go on to our next show. So I think it's a little different because I think that those Bravo ladies do take things a little more personally because that's kind of the shows that they're on and they are not gamers. I mean, mm -hmm. look, at the end of the day, they're – and plus, like, Sheree and Phaedra had a 30-year relationship, we learned. So, I mean, like, that that alone probably was kind of something that would kind of mess with your head, you know? Yeah. It's tough. These yeah. a lot of hurt feelings in the traders. A lot of hurt feelings, especially with these Bravo girls. And I think the Bravo girls, from what I've heard, take it more personally. Even from our, even from my first season, like the gamers, us that were on Big Brother, Survivor, we didn't take it as personally as like the regular people or the people that had like, like done The Bachelor, you know. So yeah. Yeah, it's a game. Look, it's wild with the traders specifically because I feel like with all the seasons I've seen you do get that vibe where mm -hmm. people don't come in realizing, all right, well, the, the reality is three of us are going to be told we have to backstab everyone else. Not everyone's like, okay, that makes sense. They're like, how dare you do this to me? It's like, well, if I want to win, I have to do this to you. I'm sorry I don't have the privilege of not having to be shady to get to the end. And I feel like that gets magnified by a hundred when you factor in that some of these people know each other and have some kind of history or underlying relationship to go with it as well. So it does make for some tense TV. Oh, a hundred percent. I think we saw that blowing up and like kind of coming together throughout the whole season. And so I think it's going to be interesting to see what MJ has to say to um, Phaedra. And maybe even MJ is going to have uh, feelings toward, I don't know, like poverty or Dan. I don't know if Dan's because Dan was so long ago, but I think with MJ and Phaedra, she, like they're going to have some words. Okay, well, let's talk about where we left things off on this week's episode. Okay, so we had finally uh, Phaedra has been voted out. And so it's all down to Kate, the only traitor left. And it looks like we're headed towards a showdown with Kate and Sandra. Now, wh what kind of relationship do you have with Sandra, Rachel? Yeah, I think a pretty good relationship. Like I've been uh, getting closer to her throughout 
this whole season. I've talked to her a lot. And then we were always very cordial before. So I've talked to her a few times, but Sandra's very tight lipped. She doesn't really, you know, give you anything. Mm -hmm. She doesn't really give you any direction one way or the other. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think I have found that when you're on the bad side, I think she does give you um, some direction in, in one way sometimes. Okay. Well, you play, did you play with her? No, I've never played with Sandra, but you know, you look, you've been in this podcast game 14 years. Uh, yeah. you know, eventually you piss off everybody at some point. That's true. Yeah. And so, okay. So, you, you know, Sandra, you know, Kate, you know, if assuming Sandra survives the night, how do you think that this next banishment ceremony, this next round table is going to go? I think that Sandra and MJ are going to go for Kate. I think Kate like put her cards out there too much. And she was a little too vocal about Phaedra being selfish and just a few other things that she said that seemed a little off that Why'd I she say that too. Why'd she say that you selfish Phaedra. Uh, that was about the like uh, banishment of like why Phaedra just kind of gave up, right? Like, yeah, but wasn't that a dumb thing to say? Oh, a hundred percent. It makes no <laughs> sense. But this is like Kate, so like I just don't think Kate has the like gaming mentality that we have, where it's like just shut your mouth. Like she's learning. She, you know, even the first time she got there, she said, "I learned from Big Brother that you vote with the group." Like I think she's just kind of learning as we she hate goes. That. Yeah, and I think <laughs> she's vote with the house. Right. Don't vote with the house. Don't vote with the house, but that was what <laughs> he has observed that they do. Mm -hmm. um, I think she doesn't, I also think she doesn't realize that she's a traitor at this point. Like she's, she said it in a few, in like two episodes ago where she was like, I'm a traitor. Would I, a traitor eat salmon or wouldn't they? So like mm -hmm. some of the things she says, I think she doesn't realize that she's a traitor. She can't say that anymore. Right. Yeah. But yeah. It's like, um, that Kate is not a good fit for a traitor. She's yeah. like a chaotic faithful. She's yeah. somebody who's there who is going to just like do crazy stuff as a faithful that make you think she's a traitor. But then when she, she's actually a traitor, it's not a good fit. Yeah, I feel like you see this in a lot of different types of games where someone will be a very vocal, chaotic, you know, causing havoc in any room they're in. And, and that's a that's great for the trader. That's an asset because for the uh, faithful being loud and wrong, you want that in as long as you can. But then, and I really thought that Kate was coming in this season hungry for a trader spot. So when she got it, I was like, oh my God, we're about to see such a fun game play out. And I feel like it's almost shocked her and kind of paralyzed her a little bit where she doesn't know how to go. Like Rachel said, doesn't know which direction to go, how to operate under this. And I think the biggest issue is that Kate spent the entire day trying to fight for Phaedra to stay. Phaedra was not fighting for Phaedra to stay to a degree. So I feel like it's just one of those, like, it's like a unfortunate truth bomb she throws out there where she does feel like Phaedra is being selfish, but now Phaedra's about to be announced as a traitor. So why are you saying that? And I, and I, well, the thing I love about the traitors at these round tables is that using the wrong word, Rob, just the wrong word is enough for people to look at you sideways. And Sandra was like, why selfish? That's a very interesting use of the word selfish. Why that? I feel like what's wild is, and Rachel, I want to know your take on this. Had Kate not been recruited, had Kate stayed a faithful, I think Kate splits the money here. I think Kate wins as a faithful. I do not think Kate's winning as a trader this season. I agree. I think this is also because um, with the way that Kate plays the game, like you said, she's a very chaotic uh, faithful but she's a faithful mm. like it's very obvious she wouldn't have been going for t trying to defend Phaedra she would have been like you know what you're probably right it is Phaedra I think it's Phaedra and Sandra like she's just like consistently uh throwing out names there and she's just like all over the place so you're like okay but when she's a traitor and she's defending Phaedra so strongly that it just you're like there's something off that doesn't make any sense and so I think that that is her problem. I think when you get recruited as a trader, you have to still mentally think you're a faithful and then be aware, even more aware of what you're saying. So I think like I would, if I was Phaedra, I would have recruited Trishel. I just really think Trishel would have been the best option ever. She was in that like you know, ultimate faithful alliance and the Peter mm. Pals and like nobody thought Trishel, no. they didn't like her, but nobody thought she was a traitor. 
And it was a good idea because Parvati tried to do this with Pilot Pete and right. that he said no. But then if you pull in a different person from that group and do the same plan, it was still a good plan. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's a really good plan. And it's also throws off the Bravo girls because with, when Phaedra brings in one of her Bravo girls, especially Kate, she's really, I think, doing herself a disservice. And I don't know if she did that because she thought she was going to go home. Um, but if she did think she was going to go home, I would have put in a charade instead of putting in, or MJ, instead of putting in uh, Kate. Because thinking like, well, maybe there's a chance you can get M everyone to think MJ is a traitor and then just get the, you know, get the idea off of your head. She just needed someone that she could throw it on so that people would just be like, no, if that person's a traitor, Phaedra's clearly not a traitor, you know, where it was like, mm -hmm. okay, now there's three traitors, we must be done. She just needed to have that one person, I think, to like, put it on, but they, she didn't do that. I, I don't know why. I feel like if we rewind back to the night that Phaedra recruits Kate, had she locked up Pete in that dungeon and said, hey, you ducked us once for whatever yes. reason, we said, here's the ticket to the win, and you said no, you're a traitor or you die, gets Peter on side, they murder together, and, and this way, you know, Peter could maybe push for someone on Phaedra's side. That would have been better for her. And then they're like, whoa, wait, Phaedra's closest ally got murdered? That's strange, so I, I don't think it's Phaedra. Then they banish Peter. Peter's a traitor. Peter, I right. think she can hide a little bit longer. But I think the combination of getting Kate and also just going down the line and picking off this other side of the house right. made it so bait of like, okay, it's definitely from this group. It's well, definitely from among us. Let's look and see who it is. Pi Phaedra. She's being quiet. Yeah. A hundred percent. And Puyo, you're right. Like her murdering John was like the dumbest move for her to murder John because it was so obvious at that point that it would be, she literally said, or I mean, sorry, John literally said, I'm going to get murdered tomorrow because Phaedra is a traitor. And then mm -hmm. they murdered John. And it, I don't understand. It was a setup. Right. I mean, maybe, right? <laughs> like at that point, it was there was too many crumbs. You can't really say it was a setup. I, and, and Phaedra never said it was a setup. She never said, like, I think someone's setting yeah. me up. You know, like, so I she think. She was checked out at that point. She was totally. I think checked. so. Yeah. I think so, too. I think after. Parvati left and Phaedra knew that like her fate was kind of determined. She just kind of checked out. Yeah. Okay. So Kate has to commit a murder. Uh, who do you think Kate is going to murder? I think because I, I lived with Kate in this castle. I think Kate makes Kate decisions and she doesn't like Trishel. And so she murders Trishel. That's uh... my, my guess, but I don't think it's a smart murder. I think it makes no sense. I think murdering Trishel puts, more suspicion on Kate. Mm -hmm. uh, Kate need, I think Kate could murder uh, maybe MJ or Sandra, uh, probably MJ because MJ is that well, one. She has the shield. She, oh, MJ has the shield. That's right. Okay. But then she could have murdered Sheree. Yeah. I right? think that's a solid pick there because to me, I feel like, yes, as the Bravo girls were like, we're united, but right. also we just like, you just witnessed MJ and Sheree vote out Phaedra. Right. Um, so there's no, like they broke the suit is that you're playing space. They broke the suit. You got like now anything can happen. I agree with you. So I think that Kate has correctly recognized that the number one contender to banish is Sandra because of how close her and Phaedra seemed, especially in the very recent memory in the, like the last day, you keep Sandra in there for potential banishment. But I think you have to take a shot that's going to leave people confused. Yeah. Because now they're like, okay, Phaedra's gone. That's probably the one Bravo trader. Wait, Trishel went? Hold on. CT, what have you been doing this little bit? That kind of <laughs> seems suspect to me. And you were part of the shortlist before. I think that could cause enough doubt that could make something else happen. But I think if she, and I, and I agree with you, I think she's going to go for someone that's not part of the people she's been working with, which I think will just point the finger back at their own group. Yeah, agree. And I think if she if she left CTN, um, murdered Sheree, then she can also oh, that everyone can say, yeah, CT was close with Phaedra. CT was 
friendly with Dan and friendly with Parvati. So is CT the other one that we haven't been looking at? And there was always suspicion on CT's name. Remember, he's come up at a few roundtables. But no, I think Kate murders Trishel because I just think that that's a Kate thing to do. And I, I don't think she's thinking that there's going to be a consequence. Okay, so let's operate under that. Okay, Trishel ends up getting murdered. Then we have another challenge and then our final roundtable. How do you think that the roundtable will go? Gosh, so I want to think that the round table, they banish Kate, but I think they're going to take it to uh, fire, the fire pit with Kate. So I think at the round table, they're going to banish maybe Sandra. I think, I think so. Yeah, I think they're going to banish Sandra at the round table because I think Kate's going to try to uh, convince them that Sandra and Phaedra were close, this, that, and the other thing. And that's her last like Hail Mary. Okay. So Kate's going to be the one that's also, I think Kate's going to be the one pushing for Sandra. And I think that's going to raise the final red flag for the Bravo girls for CT. And I think they're going to take it to fire. And I think at the fire pit, Kate is going to do whatever she can to try to, to stay, but they're going to throw their, fi their, you know, red fire and blue fire. Mm -hmm. whatever. And I think they're going to get rid of Kate at the final four. Does she have the votes to get rid of Sandra at the round table? Yeah, she would. Because all she needs, she has MJ, Sheree, and Kate. That's all they need. Because yeah. she's murdered. And mm -hmm. CT, even if CT votes to keep Sandra. Three, two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the big key here is that if Kate's pushing Sandra, that's one vote on Sandra. So either it's a 3-2 split or it's a 4-1 where she's on an island voting out Sandra. Because I think I'll be genuinely surprised if anybody but Sandra or Kate gets banished at the final yeah. round table. It's okay. one of the two. Agree. So, all right. So we're looking at potentially a, a win there that split the money between CT, Sheree, and MJ, those three. I don't know. I wonder if they go, if they Isn't split that so it. right? Like what did, uh, like, with, with, with all due respect to, you know, CT won one challenge. The CT, I thought, like, seemed like uh, he kind of knew what was going on, but I, don't know, I feel like MJ and Sheree, with all due respect. Oh, I know. No, I think winners I think of, this, of this game. What the hell? Well, and that's what happened in season one, honestly. Like, and I love Andy, but they had no idea. <laughs> like, and they lost, Andy, right? And they lost. Um, I don't think that the faithfuls will lose. I think the faithfuls will win because there is one traitor. This traitor is a bad traitor. Whereas with Sari, Sari was a good traitor, and Sari was able to convince them uh andy and uh quentin that uh sari was she was thought was you know yes. faithful and sari had ari to still uh go back on so here kate doesn't have any trader to say look there's that last trader we were looking for so now because kate is the last trader it's going to be a lot harder for her to win um but i think i think even if they banish Sandra, I still think there's a chance that Kate is going to try whatever she can try to get to stay as long as she can. And I wonder if she's able to stay to final three. Mm -hmm. So she's I think she's either out four or three. So they'll either split it two ways or three ways. That's what I think. That's the big layer, because I think that obviously, even if you get Kate out, you can still if you have a two person majority in the three. You can still push to vote out of faithful there just to split the money 50 50. oh so that'll be intriguing for me to see because that's the other yeah, aspect vote out of CT. It, which i think could happen yeah it um, could happen. you're right because yeah. it's, it's mj and sheree yeah i could definitely see that and, and rob here's the thing man um i'm not saying mj is like the mastermind of all masterminds but I think let's put some little credit on her. I feel like in the last couple episodes, she's woken up and she's been doing, making I some guess. maneuvers. I mean, that's, I guess that's fine. But she, I mean, has Sheree known anything the whole season? Sheree's the one where I'm like, she's definitely been on for the ride and definitely benefited from having a close friend be the traitor and keep her safe. Because Sheree, typically Rob, I feel like personally in a, in a regular season of the traitors, is someone that gets murdered in the middle of the night out of nowhere and is more of a 
wait, why would they take out Sheree? Mm -hmm. And then that causes some doubts. Whereas this season, they've been so clear cut, just focusing on, and like Kate said in the turret, she was like, this Peter Pal side made it a numbers game. So we're going to number game them out. That's why Sheree survives here. Where I feel like typically she's someone that gets clipped in the middle somewhere, kind of like how Tamra got clipped in the middle to like just cast some doubt and move the pieces along. Um, but she's here. And and honestly, yeah, she might be winning a piece of the prize pot, even though we've not really seen much of her and the finale's near. Can I break some news here, Rob? Breaking news. Hold on. Yeah. Right, Puya has some breaking news for us here today on the podcast. Let's go. Breaking news. All right. Puya Zambakili, Chief Traders Correspondent, got something. What is All it? All right. So in the middle of this podcast, I ventured into the streets because my eyes were wandering a little bit. And I found out that Andy Cohen confirmed on his radio show this morning that the finale and the reunion are coming out this Thursday. Oh, no. okay. Wow. So about maybe to get supersized. Maybe it's a ho hum finale. I mean, think of all the scenarios we put out here. Yeah. Um, the traders ain't winning this one. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, the, the the good news and the bad news is uh, all the traders is coming out on thursday night bad news uh podcast pushback till 11 o'clock start time <laughs> yeah, yeah that's bad news for rob rob uh get that coffee ready yeah but, but that's exciting that, because that means that right after we find out we're gonna know how they react what they're reacting mm -hmm. and have you been watching the after the murders or whatever mm, the, the post-mortem post yeah. yeah yeah so i love that this is another reason why i think season two is superior. I love watching the postmortem. I'm loving learning about what is going on in their heads. And the interesting take on this is that this is in the moment right when this is happening. So they're freshly thinking, whereas like at a reunion, we're watching mm -hmm. it, we're remembering things a little differently. So I really, I really enjoy learning about their moves and why they're doing things. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've definitely, I feel like they, and that's the thing that I praise the traders for is I feel like they listen to the audience in yeah. between season one and two. I think not dropping them all in one day was great because, you know, there's a lot of people that'll watch the shows on like double speed just to get to the end. And then they'll, you know, try and spoil it for other people of the results. I love that we got one episode a week. It left it intriguing. It's constantly on everyone's minds week in, week out. Whereas season one, I had a great time and we covered it lawlessly but by february 1st everyone had moved on um and it was just kind of like all right on to the next show but so i love that was like a month later yeah yeah the reunion was later so this is great change where mm. we're immediately going to get to the fallout of everything yeah and it's also nice because i i feel like this season people are uh, kind of getting to play along with the traders where it's like we're seeing it on TikTok. We're seeing the memes. We're seeing the the big splash every week that we get usually with with our other favorite shows like the Big Brothers and mm. the Survivors. Like, and I love watching the memes and the people making fun of the show and the people like talking about it. And it's fun that you get to play along with this kind of show because it's such a fun it's such a fun show. Speaking of memes, Rachel, did you know that one of the players this season was a heavy influence on Rob and Rob wanted to dress like them? Have oh, you seen this? I haven't seen it. Can we show can you show it? Rob, can you can you bring uh, exhibit A onto the I, scene? I, I do not have that at the ready. Oh, uh, but is it MJ? Yeah. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> See, but that was also Maybe the moment one of the MJ winners. woke up. Yeah. That was also mm -hmm. when MJ woke up. And no, I, I did see that um with Rob's face on MJ like backing out. Yeah, that was that was yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what it was. <laughs> um I have one question for you, Rachel, because I don't remember and, and maybe you can rejog my memory. So I actually your season all dropped in one day. What has your thought been on the players of this current season being so active on socials, doing interviews, podcasts, and so on? Does that change your experience watching the show? Yeah. Do you prefer them to just not say anything till after the show's done? Because I feel like they're putting out a lot of information out there. I like that. And I think it's fun because this show is a fun show. At the heart of it, it's a really hard show to play being a faithful. So it's fun to watch and see the reactions yeah. and see the memes and see the players listening, listening to them on the podcast. And 
learning about like the relationships in the background. I'm sorry. I don't know my dog. I get on a podcast. The dog loses his mind. They did pretty good for a while. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, no, I like that. And I like the experience that we kind of get to like live through the episodes with them. I think it's more fun. Dog likes it too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Rachel. Let's bring in some questions. We asked our listeners for some questions. Okay. Sarah Cupcakes, one of the most interesting Rob is a podcast listeners. Uh, she wanted to know, Rachel, which players do you believe are in most need of a life vest for the finale and not because they're going to do a water challenge? Oh, gosh. I think Sheree needs a life vest because she was floating the whole season. Yes. And yeah, I agree with Puya, and she should have been gone midway. But I realized that once they told us that they had a 30 year relationship, Phaedra was never getting rid of. Yeah. And I saw that with the wine. You remember when Sheree almost got poisoned with the wine? She was like about to jump in and grab that goblet from Parvati. And I feel like I wonder <laughs> that would have been amazing television, right? Because like Phaedra what- pushes her out of the way. Yes. Right? <laughs> if she like pushed her out of the way, like not Shrey. They slow motion it. No. <sighs> exactly. Yeah. Spills it on the floor. Yeah. But so, but Rachel, it, to in traders, do you want to be a floater if you're running uh, faithful? I don't. Oh, I don't know. Brendan and I talked about that this morning because um, so Sandra relationship has, goals. Yes. By the way, thank you. <laughs> yes. Sandra has done a really good job of kind of being a floater too but she's like i feel like she's a active floater where she knows what's going on she's making conscious decisions to be like laying low be friends with everyone she still gives the audience what we want to know which is like why is she doing this and she tells us like because i think it's a better idea to lay low and to be friends with everyone um but like when you're outspoken if you don't Like if you are too much in it, if you're a Peter pal, like you get in trouble. John got in trouble for filibustering every single round round table, you know, like, (laughs) and I also wish we had someone like John to filibuster our round tables because we were lacking. (laughs) They need a John every season for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was good. He was good. Uh, Even though we didn't know who he was coming in, uh, he did a good job. Um, Okay. How about um, a question for you about, uh, this is from uh, uh, Double uh, Dubs Whitlow says, do you think that Kate would have been a better trader with the season one cast compared to how she is with the season two cast? Yes. I definitely think if Kate was on season one that she would have, could have possibly won with Suri. If Suri would have let her, I don't know. I don't think Sari was splitting that money with anyone, Mm -hmm. but I do think Kate had more relationship built up with the final people than she does with, with this season. Um, But relationship where she didn't care. Like for some reason, she's very invested in her relationships with this season of people because she, she says, tells Phaedra she's selfish. Like, I don't think season one, Kate would have done that. Yeah. It's wild to me, Kate's journey, because I legitimately think if she had just let Phaedra go out here without trying to save her, right. without doing the outburst at the round table, where are they going to look? What's their evidence? It's Sandra. They're going to go, Sandra, I think she'd be such a good spot. Yes. Um, but Great. one episode, she tanked it. I really feel that way because this should have been a cakewalk for her, but it was not. No, I agree. And they're they're still thinking there's a fourth trader. So because they're all in that mindset. And Kate, it somehow hasn't picked up on the fact that they all think that. But I don't understand. They're saying it in front of her. So that's her biggest downfall, too, that she hasn't picked up on the fact that they think there's still one more trader left. Yeah. Bobby Hall has a question for you, Rachel. Bobby says, Rachel is a player that's always going to draw attention to her no matter what game she plays. How did she think about the players who came into the game as huge targets? And what would she have done differently knowing more about the traders now? Uh, I think Janelle played a very similar game to what I did where we want to be aggressive. We want to get the shield. We want, I'm very jealous that they got shields too. see the, all these things. <laughs> we didn't get. So yeah. they got to like fight for their life with the shields. We did not get that. And I really liked that. Um, I felt like 
Janelle was, uh, she could have made more relationships or could have like laid back a little bit. So she was almost too much of a player where she could have taken it back a little bit more. Um, Parvati, I think Parvati's downfall was not becoming friends with the Bravo click. And mm -hmm. if, if Parvati saw Sandra being best friends with them, that could have been her in. And I don't know why she didn't use that as an in. Parvati also never turned on Phaedra. So that was also her big downfall because she never, never wanted to like throw sh like more shade on Phaedra, even to this fact when Parvati know knew that she was getting banished, she didn't really fight for herself over Phaedra. She just kind of like got banished. Yeah. Dan, I don't know if he was a target going in. I don't know that anyone cared. But I don't know how many people even knew who he was. Right. I don't think that they did. I don't. Th and he didn't make himself a target. He should have been. Apparently, he should have been more outspoken from what we saw. Yeah. Because if he was more outspoken, I think people would have not targeted him. as. I think he was set up so well. Like, yeah. I think Dan could have, like, coasted to the win. And I think that his behavior made him a target right. nobody was coming into the game targeting him right. and maybe that's what makes johnny bananas so mad is that johnny bananas like i didn't even have the chance to play dan nobody knew who he was maybe right. obviously janelle maybe sandra other than that he was not on anybody's radar no yeah they were I'm begging him please yeah. tell me any give me a name so to run with so strange yeah. yeah. I, I mean, this is the same thing that kind of got Phaedra on, you know, more confirmed this episode was uh, CT being like, you don't have any suspicions. We're at the final seven. Like, tell yeah. us something. Yeah. So, And if CT, I think if, if Phaedra would have said Sandra, I think that they probably, she would have made it through an extra banishment. I really think she would. I think she could have gotten Sandra banished. And mm. then I think Phaedra probably still would have gone because they would have been that would have been another nail in the coffin, as they say in the traders. But I mean, she could have lasted an extra week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like what I learned from from Phaedra, and I know there's a lot of people who listen to this who are way more versed in, in the Phaedra lore than I am, having yes. never watched her on any other show. But the vibe I got from Phaedra was there were lines she wasn't willing to cross. Yeah. She was not willing to. And, and I think why the Dan thing bothered her so much was we had a good thing going why are you putting my name out and i feel like anytime we saw phaedra clap back it was if someone took the shot first yep. phaedra was never pushing a name first never trying to get someone out and i think ultimately because i agree there's so many different ways she could have gone through with this murdering someone from her side or putting suspicions on sandra but i don't think those were lines phaedra was willing to cross i don't think she was willing to do that yeah. Um, which ultimately will cost her, does cost her heavily in the end game. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that uh, there's other breaking news, right? Oh, more breaking news? I don't know. Uh, breaking is, news. Or was that, sorry, was that the breaking news that Puya already shared? Well, what was it? I don't know. It says that there's more finale stuff. Oh, don't read what Sam says in the private chat. Uh, <laughs> we'll make the call on that. There was nothing new. All yeah. the 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 new upgrade is that we'll get the first confrontation between Dan and Phaedra since yeah. filming, which that doesn't shock me. Um, yeah. And the eliminated faithfuls get to watch the. Uh, yeah. We see the reaction to them if watching the last twenty minutes. There's a message in the private chat. I see it. And I, and if it's worth talking about, I'll talk about it. Nobody else, for anybody, anybody else on the podcast that listens to this, you don't have to read. If I didn't mention what Sam puts in the private chat, don't read it. I went to my Twitter. I was baited. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rachel, we yes. have a question for you from Jen Costner wants to know. JN Costner, after seeing how Dan's actions placed such a large target on the other traders. Do you think that the traders should be allowed to call out the others at the round table? Should it be limited to framing faithfuls? I've seen a lot of people say, Dan ruined the season. No, when I he know everyone says threw that. threw Phaedra under the bus, that was the point where the season started to go downhill. But how do you make it so the traders don't just throw another random trader under the bus? I think that there is a some trader rule about not saying your other trader's name. So I think that is one rule. But then 
Uh, I think it did not ruin the season. I think it made it harder for the girls, but there was already suspicion on Parvati. Um, Parvati and Dan were off going, you know, in their little space um the whole time so nobody i don't think that that was a shock to anybody um however i do think there should be some sort of way that the traders can call it another trader to save themselves but not to ruin the not to impact the game because you do need like at that round table i mean i'm not saying he should have said poverty is a traitor but if there was a way for him to say why aren't we looking at this this and this yeah. So that he could save himself. Well, but yeah, I feel like the traders, don't they make them like take an oath that you're going to keep it a secret? Yeah. Like, isn't it like kind of against the spirit of like, okay, if it's between Dan and Parvati, I can see, all right, I'm going to throw Parvati under the bus. But if it was like totally a third person that's like not even on the radar, like it does seem a little like uh, if you're the producer, it's like uh, you're kind of like kind of messing this up here. So that's the thing. I feel like there was a there was a recipe list of things that that made this feel the way it does. Because at the core of it, the oath is you can't tell anyone you're a traitor, and you can't tell anyone. Okay, so I'm the traitor. Let's work together. Here are the other traitor. You can't do any of that. That's the oath. But at the foundation of the game, you can very well put some suspicion on your fellow traders. You can try and like throw them out silently, sneakily. However. But I think a couple of things came together here to really make this Dan one feel like it crossed the line for a lot of people. I think at the heart of it is that Dan clearly had not done any work of laying a foundation of suspicion yeah. on Phaedra and wanted to blindside her at the round table, hoping she'd like slip up. That didn't happen. And then that made people look at her moving forward. Yeah. And then also, he also did the thing, Rachel, where it was like, it, and it was like, this seemed like this, this, this was calculated of like, hey, I'm not going to say a name, but when I do, yes. I'm not going to miss. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So take, take, it, take this to the bank. When I tell you a name, it's going to be the name. And so it was almost like that that was like he was sitting on that, like his ace in the hole of that's what he was going to do all along, which again, it feels like it's not in the spirit of the show. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think that that's in the spirit of the show because that you're letting someone like know that this is a traitor. This is who it is. That's definitely not. But there should be a way for them to save because like nobody got mad when Ari and um, Sari called out Christian. Um, I think, oh, I was going to say, I think you're talking about Ari. I was going to say, I, I, I no, still no, see not people Ari, on there but, but, um, but when, but Ari and Sari. Called out Christian. Yeah. And Sari was like, well, you are definitely doing this, this, and this, Christian. But they didn't start it. They didn't instigate it. Like, it wasn't like that, uh, hey, everybody, you know who might be a traitor? Christian. And be like, oh, wow, I didn't even think about him. Like, even like when Cody was sinking, like, uh, Christian and Sari were like, they they did not try to help him. Like, they, they, hmm. they sort of like went into it like, I'm not going down with the ship. Like, I think that's fine. But when the person was fine, and then you out of nowhere injure them, it feels like that that's not in the spirit of how like that seems like that's a problem i think that's the thing is like there's we've had a lot of fun moments in different franchises of the traders where watching a trader start to throw another trader's name out whether it's whispering to the person next to them at the round table or in the game that's fun it's fun because if it gets back to them it causes a war that's a good time to watch or when they get back to the turret and they miss like they fired and they missed on their own trader that's so much fun to watch and it's good popcorn i think what isn't fun and this happens also in other franchises is the oh i'm almost out screw yeah. you for not working with me i'm gonna put your name down and put like an exclamation yeah. mark so that people and look at you that i don't love and also it's like trust me i have no evidence of this but mark my words <laughs> i have I, I know in my bones this person is a traitor believe I, me yeah i think the when people talk about you know the show getting going sideways i don't think it was at the round table i think it went sideways when dan insisted on taking the shot of bergy and him having the shield i think that's when that things really went wrong yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. yeah and and you're right because when uh poverty said the thing about the housewives to phaedra and phaedra was like leave the housewives that was so mouth. good so good mm -hmm. and that she set that line and you know i thought that that was such a fun thing to watch um but yeah 
Dan made so many missteps, just like with Phaedra's murdering of John. It's just, you know, they the murders, they have to be more calculated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know why, because Dan, Dan should have known better than to go for Bergie, mm-hmm. especially when Parvati warned him, because that warning alone should make him double think. Yeah. I just feel like this early in the game, why risk it? There's a whole house that don't yeah. have the shield that you know about. Just mur- yeah. That's when John should have gone out, was in that moment. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah no, I, I feel like <laughs> the game is fun because the traders are eventually going to stab each other. I think that's intriguing to me. I think it, because already the game is heavily favored in the, in the way of the traders because they can't get murdered. They can only get banished, and there's only less of them, so the odds of them all going out is small. So I like when they turn on each other. The civil, the traitor civil war is some like some of the best moments on the show. So you oh, need yeah. that, but but do it in a fun way. But make right. it fun. okay. <laughs> All right, Matthew Labello wants to know, Rachel, would you say Big Brother or the Traders is harder? Now you so, might get yourself in trouble here. I don't know what's gonna be the right answer. I think that my first season was Big Brother, right? And that was really hard. But if I was playing the traders my first season, I think it would have been harder because you don't have anything to go off on. You don't have any way to save yourself. Um, so when you're in Big Brother, you can win an HOH, you can win a veto, you can go talk to everyone before there's a vote. Whereas on Traders, it's basically like you've, you're have you a, a traitor. I'm going to banish you. You are here at the round table. Give me your 30 second spiel why I shouldn't. But everyone already wants to banish you. So it's like a lot easier to stay in the Big Brother game and you have more chances to save yourself than the Traders. Mm-hmm. Like... You know, if we look up everyone's reason for eviction or reason for banishment, there is way more tangible reasons on the Big Brother side. For traders, I feel like it could be, yeah, you blinked twice once and that was weird. Get out. Like, you you left. And that's your legacy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or you get murdered and you don't right. even have to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Inconsequential. Right. I have a question from Jessica Frey. She wants to know. Does Rachel want Brendan to play season three or a future season? And would she want him to be a faithful trader or a faithful recruited to be a trader? Um, oh. Rachel, what would you want for Brendan? Hey. Oh, Brendan! <laughs> yes. Brendan, He's I... He's back, I, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I would Brendan. love it. Hey. Thanks for having me on. Wow, yes. Good to see you guys. Hey. How are you? Where, where are good. you? What which job are you at right now? Um, <laughs> the only job I have at the moment, well, outside of being a parent, right? Yes. Um, so I, I am a, um, I'm an assistant professor. I'm in radiology at UAB, University of okay. Alabama. Birmingham. So good to see you. Yeah. Okay. Are you following all the traders? I mean, I'll be honest with you. I follow Twitter, which usually gives me the shortened version of what's going on in traders, yes. and then I and then I corroborate my information with Rachel about what's going on. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, and usually I can put, to, put two and two together. So I think I'm pretty much up to speed. I, I don't know. Is it down to five? Is that the last we're at now? Five people out to be. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, now, it is interesting. Would you I, play, I, Brendan, would you go? I, I mean, I would it? like to play it. I think, I think I could do a decent job. I mean, Really, you know, I've had this conversation, you know, Matt, Matt Hoffman and I talk pretty frequently and we, wow. he was saying, look at you, what a, what yeah. a name dropper. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I gotta, you gotta, you know, make moves here. I saw gotta, Matt Hoffman says that the traders is not a good show. Well, he, he, he complained about what I think is a, is, is a real, you know, it's a, it's an argument is that the traders have a massive advantage. And that's the first thing I told Rachel when I saw the show, I was like, oh man, if you're a trader, I mean, really all you have to do is not mess up really. I mean, that's. You just got to mm-hmm. tread lightly and not give your show your cards. And, you know, so I don't know. I think the traders have a massive advantage now to say, I think you're just, you know, you're going to stab in the dark. So I guess you got to kind of read people well and, and wait for somebody to mess up, really, if you're uh, faithful. Um, so well, I think that's the thing, because the traders like Dan, Parvati, Phaedra, they all just dropped this season. So I don't know. Maybe they don't have a massive advantage. Well, Rachel did say that Dan w- apparently was not being very sociable with everyone, which again, that's a, that's a mm-hmm. huge mistake. Like, why would you not be? I mean, that's either you're acting, you know, her season, she said Cody was like sweating bullets. Yeah. 
he was, you know, so it's like, I don't, I, I don't think it's that hard, but you know, again, yeah. All right, so Brendan, you could go be a trader. I mean, I would love to be a trader because I Rachel, definitely would he, I could pull he be it good off. at it. I, I think mean, he'd be better as a, a faithful recruited to be a trader. Okay. Because Maybe. I think there must be something about starting the game as a trader where you are just mentally uh, maybe just like the length of time or I don't know how Sari, Sari did it, but I think it must be hard because they have to consistently just like keep up this lie and not say anything. And there were times that if we would play on season two with Sari and it was season two and not season one, I think that Stephanie and I talk about how there were tells from Sari that we probably could have, we probably could have gotten, but because it was the first season. You don't really know what you're doing. I think that we kind of overlooked a lot of this. Yeah. You were the pioneers. Right. So I mean, you're the reason there's a season two. Yeah. yeah. You know? so. Now season three, I think it was, we bet we'll get a different game from everyone. Okay. Yeah. Should it be all stars, Rachel? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, I would love to go back, but like, I feel like even with watching with Kate, what happened with Kate, like, it's not an all-star game yet. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like Kate has made a lot of mistakes in three episodes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Did, well, did you and I was even saying to Rachel about with like Sandra, I was asking her about Sandra because I'm like, is, is Sandra just doing what Sandra always does? <laughs> it's just like mm -hmm. laying low, like playing in the middle, like trying to stay out of everyone's way, which, you know, in traders may be a good strategy. I mean, it's not, it's not entertaining, right? You don't want to watch people who aren't really, arguing or accusing each other you know because that's i think what a lot of people want to watch but i mean her if it if it gets her to the end i mean I, it's hard to say it's not a good strategy now brenda did you, did you have any favorites from this season um i mean rooting for? i really honestly again having not watched as much of the show but seeing clips i think fedra was really at least a, a, a i enjoyed seeing her take you know play better than than dan geesling than you know some of these people who uh -huh. who come in poverty who you know you you think oh they're gonna these people are gonna they're gonna mop the floor with these you know these bravo people they're not gonna know what's, what hit them but uh here she is i mean playing smoother playing better you know than than i think a lot of the seasoned competitive reality uh you know all-stars but do you recommend watching shows just on Twitter and not actually watching the shows? Well, I mean, usually it, you, I, I'm Rachel not going to lie. No. I like to see, you know, what is the big, like, Hey, what, why are people making a big deal about this? This is why I always end up asking Rachel. Cause usually there's missing information. It's like, well, why, why is everybody mad at, at this person? Cause, and I always look at the memes, right? So like the meme of the Tomb Raider, uh, you know, I forget what her name is, uh, running, running through and they're like poverty, like trying to survive another week. Meanwhile, Pedro is just like chilling, uh, you know, drinking her martinis. Um, mm -hmm. I think those are, those are kind of get me because I, they're entertaining to, and I want to fill in the information, know what, know what's going on. So, yeah, I mean, it is honestly, I, I got a board exam. I got to study for like a month. So this you're is busy. What, uh, you're optimizing your time. You're just watching the memes instead of the yeah. show. And then if you have yeah. any questions, then you have an expert at home. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this is good. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, get the best. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, what I've caught, well, honestly, the clips that I've seen on have been good, though. So I do. I mean, I really enjoyed poverty because I think she was really playing. And, and that's kind of what you want to see. I want to see people accusing other people. You know, it's kind of nice to see the traders not get along, too, because I see you. You know, you could see the first part of season one. They, they seem to get along OK. But here, you know, this season, from what I gather, it seemed like they weren't really, you know, gelling right off the bat. So it was already already troubled waters. So, I mean, that's it's, it's honestly something I hadn't considered, because for me, I'm thinking if you're a trader, I mean, all you have to really do is kind of lay back and just take people out and point the finger at other people, you know. But again, sometimes I guess, you know, uh, you know, quarterback couching, whatever you want to call it is is uh definitely much easier so i don't know the one thing i did ask rachel about i was curious was about dan blowing up uh phaedra's game and yes. did that go down the way you know at least twitter alluded to and and was he really responsible for her because if that is the case i think that that really sucks because if you're allowed to go out and really blow up people's games that's that kind of sucks i mean yeah, yeah. We were just talking about that yeah 
like the long and short of it is yes he did but it was not maliciously done right he okay. incorrectly thought he could get enough sway to get it done in one fell swoop and what did you it mean it was not maliciously done i don't think he was like well i'm going so screw this let me throw phaedra under the bus because i think oh, that's a lot of the discourse yeah. out there no, I, I don't do, think it was I do that believe that he thought that uh that he could send her out instead of him and yeah then people would look at him as the hero yeah uh, like i think but, he thought he had way more juice than he was working with i think uh, he was like a uh, coach danning it right as we've mm -hmm. seen him mm -hmm. do <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i did say to rachel when when she kind of explained what you, i guess you guys the sentiment you're you're saying is she, i was wondering you know when you this is how i always felt about big brother is when people get to the they sit down in those chairs and we're ready to vote for somebody 99.9 .9 of all those people have already made up their mind yeah like I don't know that you're going to say anything that uh, uh, that is going to change anyone's mind. I always say the only example I've ever seen in Big Brother of all the seasons I've ever watched was Godfrey uh, mm -hmm. and his season where I think that he may have swayed people at the very last minute. But I, that may also be the person, you know, that may be the the, the instance, the, the situation, the person that's, you know, the yeah. person that is changing their vote. So, I mean, but I think it's very rare. On traders, I don't think people go at to that round table with their minds made up because they don't give us enough time to talk. And I think that's part of production's like strategy. They don't want us to sit in the room and say, all right, this is who we're voting out today. This is what's happening. Um, I think they want us to go to the round table and be forced to talk mm -hmm. about it and have that conversation at the round table. Yeah. Better for the viewer, you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. Brendan, do you have any other hot takes about the traders? Uh, I don't. I mean, but I, I do. I do. Maybe this is a question for all of you because I really okay. have not watched. Is were the competitions different for this season than they were the first season? Or are they the same competitions? Because I saw the bug one. Yeah, they're similar. They're, similar. they're not the same. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's it would be nice to see like but... a little bit of variation of you know and, and see some some different. I don't want it to get to be like Big Brother where. The people coming in from last, you know, watching season one and season two will know. It's Otev. We know what to do today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we I don't love Otev. That, but... The thing about this show is that um, the competitions don't really make a difference. I mean, maybe. maybe. But I do I like mean, to see when. Well, the, when and, and Brendan, to be fair, that yeah. you, that the difference between uh, Traders and Big Brother is like you have one show where it's like the challenges are pointless and yeah, are like yeah, a true, huge portion true. of the show yeah. and the other thing is big brother yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, oh. fair enough fair enough i mean and maybe that maybe i just i like to see i mean that was one thing i always liked about big brother canada is i felt like they did a better job of having competitions which really were not going to determine whether somebody stayed or left but they really made some sort of cohesion. You'd see yeah. people like bickering. I mean, Hold on a second, Rachel, is this is this sponsored content for Big Brother Canada that's kicking off this week? <laughs> yeah, right? Brendan, come on and, and talk did, up Big Brother uh, Canada on this podcast. Big Brother Canada this year. That's true. So she did. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to just trying to get her a, a job for the next casting yeah. season. You know? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean. Like I said, it, it I, I I do like to see that it's it's been doing well and that we are going to see a season three because I do want to yeah. see some I just want to see some people that are playing these games right because the worst does. thing I think oh. when you get you get stunt casting and you you get people in there that are there to bring attention they're headliners so people start watching but they don't really do much you know so if you're gonna bring okay. people in from reality TV just bring people that are gonna play you know yeah okay Rachel. Who are they going to bring in for a uh, Traders Big Brother cast? Are we uh, like, I feel like we, okay, so we got you and yep. Janelle and Dan and Dr. Will won't go. So then <laughs> who's left? Yeah, I know. I, I think about this. So I'm guessing like, I think Xavier would be fun. I do think like, obviously Brendan, right? Of course. Of course. Um, I think, you know, I think that maybe like a Taylor Hale would be fun, but I know Taylor she's would be good. still in contract with Xavier. Oh. How so, long are these contracts? Is this reindeer games? Two, Re? two years. Two years. Two years. Hey, why not? Why not Matt Hoffman? Huh? Well, Matt Hoff? Well, he, fun, not after but... his tweets about how the show sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's he not like, tweeting out that he loves the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he better change. Yeah. His tweet will be edited by the end of the show. <laughs> you know, I want to see 
I don't want to see, and this might be like a unpopular opinion, but I don't really want to see Derek on because I feel like Derek is the same as Dan and Cody. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like, I mean, maybe sure. F- season five, season 10, but like, let's not put him on season three and make him a traitor. Like how boring does that sound? Like, it just is like, where's Enzo Enzo for the traitors, not Enzo. Uh, I want to <laughs> see someone that plays the game a little bit differently than what we've seen the past with Dan and Cody. And uh, so like Janelle and I are very similar as well. So maybe we need a mm-hmm. Danielle Reyes would be really fun. Oh, she, I mean, that would be great. Yeah, she would be great. And I wonder I, I think Daniel would be great games. Choice. Yeah, mm-hmm. she, would be a good choice. she would be a good choice. And I think she would be fun to watch as a faithful. Um, but I think she would also be a really great trader. She'd so be such a good trader. Would be yeah. a good trader. Um, and then I, I don't know, like, I mean, a lot of people are saying, I mean, everyone's throwing out everyone's names, but I think we don't, I just don't want to see the same thing we've seen from the people, from the same kind of characters that we've seen from big brother for the past two, two seasons. I mean, I co-sign what Brandon was saying. I want, I want people who are there to play. Yeah. Doesn't have to be playing really good. It doesn't have to be the most optimal. Give me some of the bigger characters that we've seen on big brother. So like Frank would be fun because he's a big character. Yeah, he'd be yeah. good. Yeah, he'd be very dramatic. That'd be good. I mean, I like strategy players because I think that game definitely needs a strategy player, but I also do like people that are willing to speak their mind. Right. Because mm-hmm. I don't want somebody that just sits mm-hmm. back and just stays in the background, you know. So right. if you, we do, we want to watch somebody that's accusing and you know, but being manipulative, but also being strategic. Mulan? You know? What a Mr. <laughs> Wonderful. <Mulan. laughs> he can use his magic power that he finally got. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. I mean, even like a Danielle, um, Danny, uh, Dominic, what's Dominic's sure. name? Briones. All oh, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, maybe Danielle, she would be good. Um, I think it's just like, I think it, we have a lot of good people to choose from Big Brother. I just hope that we don't see the same type of people again. Yeah, but you also got to be careful not to, you know, get somebody who's going to overplay immediately. And that's what I, without seeing Dan play again, I don't know, but I would have imagined he kind of mm-hmm. over, overplayed. And that's probably why he got in the situation. He underplayed. <laughs> yeah, he underplayed. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I don't know. Like he yeah. underplayed and then overplayed as he was about to go. Right. Yeah. 100%. Which is why I think Xavier would be a good option because I think Xavier is so friendly and I think he's like, I don't think he's going to overplay or underplay. Like the way he played his big brother game, he he's very good at like, he can still stay in the middle. He can win the competitions. Mm -hmm. He can talk to, he's friends with everyone, but like he also knows when to talk and when to not talk and when to let, you know, Tiffany take the blame. (laughs) So. And he's been watching the show and his tweets have been very complimentary of the show. So I oh. would I would put him on my board of like I'll pencil him in. So now I want to see that and for Survivor, I, I really would love to see Tony. Yeah, Tony could be good. Yeah. He said it's a big year for him. Yeah. Could be. Could be. Rob Sesternino. Oh, sh- sure, oh. sure. <laughs> that, that, that. Are you sure you, you, you spelled Mariano correctly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Boston Rob was just on the Deal or No Deal. He's on Deal or No Deal, deal, or no deal Island. Deal yes. So I don't know if like Andy. we want to see him win Deal or No Deal Island and then go on the Traders right away. Right? Okay, well, it's a deal, no deal island. You make it sound like it's so easy to win, Rachel. Yeah. Well, I mean, good. I mean maybe honestly, that's what you could do next. Go to deal or no deal island. Yeah, that it's such a fun game. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so now it is airing, apparently. Yeah, it is airing. <laughs> it is airing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have you have that the Brendan and Rachel fans are so uh are are have so much tenacity. People yeah. were asking for Brendan to be on the the recap of Deal and Deal I Island. I said it hasn't even started yet. <laughs> well, it was it was specifically Hannah, so of course we have to give Hannah a shout out because she is yes, our biggest fan. <laughs> yes, yeah. I was so she's happy. She's probably that the I half the reason that we're on right now, right? <laughs> yes, she asks every week, "Can you have Rachel on the podcast?" And then yeah. finally today, I was able to say yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, Hannah. Yes. Hey, yeah. Hannah. Okay, uh, Brendan and Rachel, appreciate you making some time for us. Yeah. I know how busy you both are. A- anything else you uh, want us to know about the traders or what oh, you're yeah. doing? Oh, yeah, so 
I'm still, uh, we're still selling tickets for the cruise of deception. Oh, yes. But, well, Puyo yeah. is going to go. Oh, are you going, Puyo? Are you going? Rob said he's sending okay, me. I said, okay. I, so. I, I, said I need to send our traders reporter oh, on the cruise. Yeah, well, listen, you better pick a spot soon because we're getting sold out quickly. Um, but we still have a lot of spots available. So we're still selling out a lot of cabins and it's going to be super fun. It's a Fifty thousand dollar cash prize pool. So wow. like, if the traders win, they get split it. If the faithfuls win, they split it. Um, there's thirteen teams. Uh, mm -hmm. It's gonna be a really fun game. Brennan's playing, so Puya. You oh, might I am yeah. playing. Yeah, like that, I like that. Puya said he wants to room with Bam. Okay. That, yeah. That... <laughs> I don't know if you can. <laughs> I guess Rob speaks for me too now. Who would have thought? <laughs> Lovely. Well, listen. Rob yeah. said he's uh, he's taking the bill, so whatever team he puts me in, I'll okay. be there. Bam is a good team to be on. And listen, I think this is – so we're also going to be pairing up the celebrities and the non-celebrities. We're pairing up in the beginning. So whoever okay. you pick, even if it's a non-celebrity, you're going to end up being paired up with a celebrity. Um, and then th we're playing a full traders game. Like the full – you're going to get – we're going to pick 15 traders from each team. To oh, my start. God. Could you imagine? Damn. Traders? I know. Who's hosting? Is Alan coming? No, we're hosting. Get it? I'm hosting my team. Yeah. And then, <laughs> wait, I don't get it. Was that a joke? I don't, I missed it. You punned <laughs> Alan's last name is Alan Cumming. Yeah. Oh, good one. Good one. That's <laughs> and Rob is He's living. Dad 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 He's living, He's living over there. Rob. <laughs> 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 no one's prouder than himself. So uh, the we're hosting our own group, so that's how that will work. So well, I'm and even better, Rachel and Brendan are going on a couples cruise without their kids for the that first time. Oh, with, any uh, with other reality yeah. TV couples? Yeah, yeah we, we are not going to have our <laughs> well, kids with us. This is the so. cruise of deception. Brendan is just saying. Oh, yeah. That well, we're this not is saying our the kids. couples cruise. This is the yeah, couples cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. Okay, whatever we're calling it. But, yeah, I didn't uh, know I'd leave my kids home. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll room with Puya. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And yeah. Me, you on Team Bam. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. And you know, it, I mean, listen. I think it's a full traders game. So if you love the traders, do it. Uh, if you want to win fifty grand, like you have a great opportunity. You can screw over every other trader at the end. Or the yeah, but are you worried that somebody like screws somebody over and then you're on the cruise with them? I like think about Dan and Phaedra. Imagine they're on a cruise together the rest of the time. Well, hey, sorry. Like Dan All and Johnny Bananas, and then you got to run into him at the food court. Yeah, you know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it, it's a full game, so they should be expecting that. We're going to do um, where escape rooms uh, is one of the challenges. There's a full wow. scavenger hunt on the private island, uh, the Royal Caribbean island. So the one of the, oh, it's man, the map right. and everything, just like what we did wow. in the show. Um, there's going to be some like surfing thing with like an endurance kind of comp. So and then there's going to be prizes for the the incentive for people to actually win the competition so that people I mean I couldn't believe they're actually paying you know, there's a $50,000 prize which is pretty crazy yeah, too. I know that you is know, you know, that's a lot of money. And then there's also going to be incentives so like if you're the longest on the you know surfboard you might be able to win an extra prize for the okay. prize. That's not added to the prize pot that's just kind of separate. So it's right, gonna it's going to be fun. Ready up, Rob. Yeah. Stretch. Stretch. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. Hey, does, does Rob get his money back, though, if you win the $50,000 prize? Yeah, that's, a, no, that's I'm, I'm I'll pay backer. you. Listen, I'll pay <laughs> you half of the price of the ticket. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What? I'm, I'm backing you to go on this. Yeah, but I'm ride. representing us and I'm bringing goodwill <laughs> and recognition. I'm going to help like us a, enhance like a, our. Uh, yeah. Yes. It's yes. like a poker. He's like your, your bankroller, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Because, Rob, I'll pay you half back, and then I'll send you on a cruise after that. <laughs> what, what, what cruise am I going on? We'll find out together. <laughs> Season two. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Everyone, right. And everyone keeps asking me if they can watch this. No, it's not It's not televised. It mm -hmm. is going to be just... Well, maybe Puya could do the recaps while he's there. <laughs> you'll have to. Yeah. I yeah. Something you'll have to. Yes. I okay. will. All right. So... Brendan, Rachel, we appreciate you. Some of the yeah. some of the goats of Rob is a podcast, all time guests, uh, back here with us. So nice whenever we can catch up. Okay. Yes, thank you. Watch thank more you. shows so we can do this more, please. <laughs> okay, perfect. And be on more shows. Yeah, perfect. Well, that's the thing. That's my preaching to Rachel's my... choir. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, you All know right. what? It's, you yes. know who always who always gets left out? 
is the guy who's taking care of the kids at home while she's That's off. That's true. Off I, right always you know, well. I did a full, a full thing of how to keep the uh, marriage a uh, reality TV curse or how to break the reality TV curse or something recently. Yes. So you're, you're good. Yes. It was like, how, uh, cause I guess Brendan and I are one of the lo So, I mean, obviously there's like, you know, the bachelor couple, Rob and Amber, and then Brendan and I are one of the longest reality TV couples. All right. So, Yes. Mm -hmm. so I, I did this like podcast on how to um, break the reality TV marriage curse. What's the there. secret? What the secret I said was that you just have to like find your person and that you have to be in love. And, you know, uh, that I always like listen to Brendan's opinions and he always <laughs> <listens to> me. <laughs> uh, and what did you say, Brendan? I said she, she probably listens to them. I don't know if she, uh, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I, said, I said you have to find someone that also kind of puts up with your like all your uh mess <laughs> yeah and then that like compliments you on it <laughs> well i mean you, you also with us i mean you realize we uh, stressful situations always give you a good insight as to who a human being is and what they're made of well we've we've done that like four times so you've done it all you yeah. know having survived four reality yeah. shows where we wanted to kill each other or, or other people I, I think that does help you figure it out. Okay. All right. Yeah. Brendan, Rachel, thank you both so much. Thank you. Uh, Puya, what's coming up for you? Well, 90 Day Fiance has their tell-all coming on mm -hmm. this uh -oh. week. We have part one. Next week, we got part two, so we'll be talking about that. And Liana and I will be getting back together on Mass Singer, re-debuting, yeah. re-premiering this season, this week. So we're going to be talking about that this week as well. Rachel, be fun. would you do Mass Singer? Uh, yeah. yeah. You call me up, I'll do it. I, I haven't been watching, but I think it hasn't aired yet, right? No, it begins yeah. on Wednesday. I don't mean podcast about it. I mean be on it. Oh, be on what well, yeah. Do uh, you want to hear me sing? Like yeah, would, sure. Uh yeah. Okay, perfect. Yep. <laughs> okay. We will be there. <laughs> I'm friending about that. We <laughs> unmask them really quickly. Like, you yeah. know what? <laughs> Just pull the mask up. <laughs> so that's my laugh is so recognizable at this point. Mm -hmm. I that's think. True. Yep. <laughs> People would be like, wait, that's that girl with the red hair from Big Brother. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, it'd be exciting. It would be. We don't see more Rudy Giuliani. That's all I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have uh, so much going on with Survivor as well. Not to mention the so, Brenda. Did you hear about the trade? The Traders finale is going to be Thursday. Yeah. Is it? Well, I'll, I'll read it. I'll Day hear about reunion. it on Twitter. Yes. Oh, yeah. Friday is going to be lit for you. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll, right, I'll yeah so just much. scroll through my memes. All yeah. you have to do is listen to Rob's podcast and you get the entire. He's got the memes <laughs> in five seconds. Yeah. No, that's true. That is true. This is, yeah. this is a good point. Well, I can't compete with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.